All right, April. You might be cold, miserable, and I'm tired, but we got a film learning to make. Let's do this. All right, we locked the door. Film learning and the masters of After Effects. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And welcome to our very first non-flash episode of the season. Today we'll be answering the request of about 500 people by taking on this effect. Random subscriber time. Irma Cat asked, will we be seeing that Quicksilver effect I requested a while ago? Patience pays off dude, and we are finally taking on something different than flash effects. With a speed running effect. Anyway, in order to complete this effect, let's have your actor run past the camera, like so. Now you can fill them in slow motion if you like, the effect settings don't change, you just have more frames to work with I guess. You'll also need a copy of Trap Code's Particular, I'll put a link to a demo in the description. Now before we start, there's a ton of tutorials out there for this effect, but none of them, and I mean none, at any displacement or particle trails. So you know, better recognise. Now let's get cracking on this bad boy. To After Effects! Okay guys, here we are in After Effects. I've already got my shot set up in a comp and I'm ready to go. If we check out a preview, you can see I've shot this in slow motion. Now I hear you ask, why would I shoot something in slow motion just to speed it up? Well if you saw the opening, you can see I do a slight speed ramp where the action slows down suddenly before continuing on. This is the only reason for filming this in slow motion, as it's actually more work, but the steps all remain the same. Now that that's out of the way, let's start with our first step. We're going to head up, add a new null object, and by animating the position controls, we'll track the movements of our hand. So let's name this one right hand, make it 3D by clicking here, we'll then scrub forward to when we see our hand, hit P to bring up the position controls, hit the stopwatch, and then we'll scrub through the timeline, not necessarily frame by frame, and we'll match the position of our hand to the null until our hand is once again out of the frame. We'll then skip ahead on the timeline a few more frames when our actor is completely out of the shot and we'll drag that position out a little bit further, estimating where our actor may be outside of the frame. When you're done, it should look like this. Unimpressive. Now guess what, we get to do that three more times for the left hand, right leg and left leg. That way, each of our extremities are tracked and looking as equally unimpressive, like so. So now that most of that tedious crap is out of the way, let's create the energy or whatever it is trailing as Age of Ultron Quicksilver runs. Now to be fair, this may not be 100% accurate as I've only seen the movie once and the trailers don't exactly help too much, but we'll have a crack anyway. So let's head up to layer, add a new solid, whatever color is fine and we'll name it right hand particle. From there, let's head up to effect, trap code and add particular. Time to change some stuff. We'll change the particles per second to 150, the emitter type to sphere, the directional spread to 20, and since we're going left to right in this shot, we'll set the Y rotation to minus 90. We'll then set the velocity to 230, the velocity random to 20, zero out that velocity distribution and change the velocity from motion to 20. Hmm, there's something there, but we ain't done yet. Let's move down to particle settings. We'll change the life to 4, that way our particles will hang around a little bit after we're gone from the shot. Let's then change the particle type to glow sphere and crank that sphere feather up to 100. We want to keep our particles fairly small, so let's change the particle size to 6. We'll keep the opacity at 100, we'll drop the opacity over life menu down and click this ramp object here. This ensures our particles fade away as our quicksilver moves forward in the shot. Okay, we've built our particles. Now let's turn them into more of an energy looking thing. Let's head over to presets and type vector. Grab that preset named vector blur and drop it on in. Our first setting to change is our type. We're gonna change that to perpendicular and then we'll crank up the amount to 37. It's looking better already, right? Next, let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add a fast blur. And we'll give that a level of five. And last but certainly not least, Head over to presets and type vibrance, and let's grab our old friend Video Copilot's color vibrance plugin. Let's pick a pale blue. Mm, that looks pretty good. We'll then crank that vibrance down to 0.5. Our last step is to parent that bad boy to our null. Let's select our right hand null and hit P to reveal our position controls. We'll then head up to our particular effect, 
hold the Alt key and hit the stopwatch on position XY. This will open an expression down in the timeline. We'll then grab the pick whip here and parent that position to our nulls position. We'll then finish it off by changing the transfer mode to add and let's see what's what. Our particles are now attached to our null and flying free. Pretty cool, eh? If you feel the need to adjust the position where your particle stream sits on your hand, you just have to adjust the nulls position. But since we're speeding it up, no one's gonna really notice if it's off a little bit. We'll then select our left hand null, hit P to bring up the position controls. We'll then move up, duplicate our right hand particle, name it left hand particle, head up to our particle settings once more, hold Alt, click the stopwatch on position XY to cancel the previous animation. We'll then click it again to make a new expression to which we are of course, parenting to our left hand null. We'll then rinse and repeat this process for both feet as well. And what you end up with is a little something that looks like this. But wait a minute, when the legs and arms go behind each other, shouldn't the particles too? Yup. And here's how we do that. Let's duplicate our footage layer, drag it on top of all of our energy layers, head to the point where our leg goes behind, grab the pen tool and draw a mask around that point of the leg. We'll then collapse down the mask menu and hit the stopwatch on mask path. From there, let's just go frame by frame, adjusting that mask until the leg is fully visible again. We'll then hit Ctrl Shift D to split the clip, trim the beginning so that it starts when our leg starts to be obscured. Let's then feather it out around five pixels. We'll then scrub forward on the timeline and repeat this process if it happens again. Now, let's see what that looks like. Much better, eh? Now let's obscure the left arm. The process behind this is a little bit different, so just bear with me. For starters, let's duplicate that footage layer again, drag it up to the top, like so. But this time we're gonna grab the right hand particle and drag it up on top. That way we're not obscuring both the right hand particle and the left hand particle at the same time with our mask. Let's select our footage layer and then scrub forward on the timeline until our torso and our hand is fully visible in the shot. This looks like a good spot. We'll then grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around anywhere you want to obscure that particle stream from being seen. From there, it's following the same steps as we did to obscure the leg. Going frame by frame, animating that mask until your character is completely off screen. Now, let's check out a preview. Pretty good, but I'm gonna add one last thing. From memory, you see a displacement trail as Quicksilver runs past Captain America in his first scene. So let's do that real easy like. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, head to effect, distort and add turbulent displace. We'll then change the amount to 68, the size to 10 and keep the complexity at one. Let's head to the start of the comp, hit the stopwatch on evolution, head to the end of the comp and crank it up to four. We'll then scrub back a few frames until our actor and the energy trails are on screen. About here I'll do. Let's then grab the pen tool and draw a weird looking trail shape. That'll do. Let's hit F and feather it out around 100 pixels. From there, we'll hit P and essentially just animate this trail to follow our actor as he moves through the frame. Once we get to the point where our actor is off screen, we'll just guesstimate and we'll move that position off screen after a few frames. When you're done, it should resemble this. It might look stupid now, but just wait, it'll get better. So now it's time to speed this thing up. Now this part will vary depending on how you shot your footage, whether it's slow motion, and whether you want that speed ramp effect or not. If you do want the speed ramp, click right here to go to last week's episode where I explain how to do that in more detail. But for this one, I'm gonna speed up the whole shot. Let's hit Control A to select everything, right click and select pre-compose. We'll then select that pre-comp, right click, head up to time and enable time remapping. And just like with our flash running, we're gonna grab that far keyframe and squeeze it down until you find a speed that you like. This looks pretty good to me. We'll then finish it off in the same sort of way, but a little bit different. Let's reopen our original comp, head over to presets and type force and drop CC force motion blur right on our bottom footage layer. Now, why are we doing this here and not in the pre-comp? Because we don't want our particles to be blurred from existence. If we only blur out the actor, they're still visible. So I'm gonna give you my settings, but you'll definitely have to find your own on this one. I set the motion blur samples to 255, the shutter angle to 200, and turn native motion blur on. 
Now before we head back, we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna turn on motion blur for each of our particle layers. That way they'll react to being sped up in the pre-comp, but nowhere near as harsh. Let's head back to our pre-comp and check out our final preview. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. All right, April, you might be cold, miserable, and I'm tired, but we got a film learning to make. Let's do this. All right, we locked the door. So that's my take on the Quicksilver Age of Ultron effect. It takes a few more steps than those other tutorials out there, but when you do things right, it normally does. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. If you're new here, get friendly with that subscribe button. For previews of upcoming episodes and my musings on daily life and whatever crap comes out of my head, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And until next week, when we return to phase two of our Flash tutorials, keep learning.